Rachel T. Meyer. I'm Polly Connor. And we are Team Thriving Home, and we're so excited you're going to cook along with us today. Yep, we are making prep session number four today, and this has three of our, like, home run favorite recipes. Yep. So we're super excited. We make these all the time. Here's mm -hmm. what we're going to make today. Remember, we're making six meals in just one hour. So we're going to double each of these recipes. The first recipe we're making is our vegetarian tortilla soup. Mm. And both of us have been making this for years and years and mm -hmm. years. It's super easy. And I think you'll love it for like lunches or an easy dinner. Mm -hmm. The second recipe we're making is our honey bourbon chicken. Oh my goodness. Another this, thriving home favorite. Definitely. <laughs> and reader favorite. People love this recipe. Again, it's a dump and go. You can make it in your instant pot or slow cooker. Mm -hmm. And then our third recipe is our balsamic shredded beef. And I had a friend of mine and her son said, mom, this is better than candy. <laughs> like what better compliment can you get on a meal? Yeah. So we think you're going to love this one as well. And all three of these can be made in the slow cooker or the instant pot. We provide instructions for both. So stay tuned for those. All right, let's get started. Woo! Woo! All right, we're on step one. This is really easy, but it's really important. Grab your freezer bags and go ahead and you should have cut up, cut apart your freezer labels, which you'll find in your packets. So you want to print, cut these apart, write any side dish ideas. And we give you lots of those on page three. So take a moment, jot down, like for this vegetarian tortilla soup, you could write down, hey, I want to serve it with some tortilla chips and maybe some guacamole, mm -hmm. things like that. We give you lots of ideas. So jot that down and then you're going to tape that on to your two bags. That way you have your bags completely ready to go and ready to fill with food. It's so much easier to tape the labels on before food is in it. So we always, in this prep sessions, tell you to do that before you even get yep. started. So while Rachel is finishing up those, we're going to move to step two. We are going to assemble our soup. So for this recipe, we highly recommend getting some of these little baggy holders. If you do not, we have a little hack we can share with you. Just grab a deep bowl and you're just going to kind of prop up your bag in the bowl. So it kind of supports it. And then once you get some food in there, it'll hold it down and kind of steady it a little bit more. But that's another hack you can do if you don't have the baggy holders yet. But again, if you're going to be doing these prep sessions, you probably should get some baggy holders. And really, I mean, two or two is enough. You can just, we usually do one recipe at a time. I would say two baggy holders. There's a few prep sessions where you might, it would be helpful to have six. They're pretty small. They're very cheap. Right. It's worth grabbing a bunch of them. Yep. If one of them breaks, then you've got a backup. Yeah. They're kind of cheap, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I have my two soups here. So I'm just going to follow the instructions in step two. And I've set up my bags. I have already drained the black beans. I've drained and rinsed these. So anytime you have a can of black beans, you throw it in the colander, run some water over it so it gets all that kind of icky juice off of it. So I'm just going to dump a can of black beans into each of these. This is supposed to start with refried beans, but you know. <laughs> okay, That's right. refried beans. I'm going to dump this straight in there. So this comes out, it's, <laughs> it looks gross. It comes out in a clog. It's like dog food. I know. <laughs> but here's the reality of what happens with that is the refried beans are great. And look for one that has very few ingredients, mm -hmm. okay? Check the label um, because sometimes it adds in like gross stuff that's not good for you. But there are some all natural ones and um, it'll thicken that soup up and it's so good. It adds flavor because yeah. there's already some flavoring seasoning in that. Yep. Um, and also like once you start getting your, after you get all your ingredients in there, we'll have you kind of squeeze it mm -hmm. and toss it around in the yeah. bag. It's important if it comes out in a glob like this one did. <laughs> yeah. You gotta mush it up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> right. All right, next we're gonna put in our corn. So we've already drained the corn. Usually it comes with a lot of liquid in it. So I'm gonna drain that off. I'm gonna dump one in each of these. And so you can use canned corn or frozen corn, and I find um, the organic corn, frozen corn at Aldi, it's super mm -hmm. cheap, so you could use that if you want. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to do petite diced tomatoes. Now, I will say, it's important to do the petite diced. I've yeah. done the regular diced before, and it'll taste fine, it's fine, but it's right. some big chunks There's of tomato. There's some big chunks of tomato, <laughs> I agree. So, Especially if you have picky eaters. Yes. You know. <laughs> yep, that's how I was like, this is all yeah. very tomato-y. Even yeah. though it was the same amount, it just felt right. very tomato-y. So that's juices and all. You don't have yes. to drain that. Mm -hmm. The other tip on that is you can um, buy the fire-roasted diced tomatoes, mm -hmm. and that kicks up the flavor even more. Yeah. So you can look for those. Yep. Okay, so this is green chilies. Just dumping those in. Yeah. So you're just finding a little can of those diced green chilies. If you can't find those for some reason, this is one of those recipes that's really forgiving. You could do yep. like extra salsa, which is our next ingredient. Right. Yep. Um, so she's doing one cup. cup. Right. 
of salsa. Just pick your favorite salsa. If you don't like spicy, do mild. If you like a kick, do medium mm -hmm. or I've never done hot in my life. No. But you can do hot <laughs> if you really are into that. And since this cooks in the slow cooker and the instant pot, those both increase spice as they just cook. Just a little bit, yeah. Right, can a little bit. So that. just make sure if you have sensitive palates in your family, mm -hmm. I would go with mild. We Medium's perfect for us. Yeah. So. All right, so the next ingredient Polly's going to do is two teaspoons of taco seasoning. Tablespoons. Oh, sorry. You're exactly right. <laughs> Tablespoons. Um, so we have a recipe for homemade taco seasoning on thrivinghome.org that you can use. And that's what Polly's got right here. I usually just make a big batch and keep it in a mason jar and it's great. I use it. Yeah. I pull it out so much to use yeah. for tacos, for things like this. Well, and or... your typical taco seasoning in the store, it'll work. It'll be fine, but it has a lot of added sugar and additives and preservatives sometimes. Yeah. So. And it saves money if you do this. In it does save money. It really does. Yep. So, okay. Your last ingredient here. This is so easy. This See, is we so told easy. you. <laughs> vegetable broth. So if you're doing yeah. vegetarian vegetable broth, you could also use chicken stock, mm -hmm. chicken broth. Right. Uh, this one, okay, with these baggie holders, I always hold it when I dump mm -hmm. in this stuff just because this, if it's going to slip out, this is when it's going to happen. So right. you're just doing the whole box of it. Whoop, that sounds this gross. Is <laughs> <laughs> that sounds gross. Oh. Um, here, I will take you, that you, Yeah, but you do that one. <laughs> that. Okay, so we have to be careful. Polly and Don't I had create some, a blooper. I know, right? We, we did a live cooking session for our first one of these. In fact, I think you can probably watch it. It's prep session two. two. Mm -hmm. We did prep session two. We had like two separate spills and it wasn't just, you know, some vegetarian soup. It was like raw meat a juice. Balsamic beef. <laughs> yeah, or no, it was like a beefy juice on yeah. meat. And it spilled all over Polly's shirt. <laughs> we were like, oh yeah, we're the experts here. Here we go. <laughs> so, showing you what not to do. Okay, so here's the part. It's kind of fun. It's like you get to massage the bag, right? <laughs> shot a video um a few weeks ago and i had to say i had to say cut the cheese and like i we are such junior high kids i, swear. <laughs> I blame my husband i am 42 and i still laugh about the word so the phrase see i'm opening this and I'm about to spill it oh yep that was about to be bad okay so something else that was worth mentioning when you cook this you are going to add cooked rice to it now there's a reason we don't at include the at the end at the yes end. you're going to stir in cooked rice at the very end I wish we could put it in this freezer bag so you yeah. wouldn't have to add something fresh to the end. But from experience, we found mm -hmm. it just gets kind of, it just doesn't work. Yes. It gets globby. Yeah. Uh, and even you can fully cook this soup and mm -hmm. it wouldn't work in a one hour prep session, but you can fully cook it on the stove yeah. and freeze it that way. Yeah. Again, if you stir, if you have that rice in and freeze it, it just gets thicker. Gets so make thick. sure you have to add on, you have to add chicken broth at the end mm -hmm. when you reheat that soup. Right. That makes sense. Did I say that clearly? Yeah. So you can fully <laughs> cook. Make sure it's very cool, then you can freeze it if you want. It yeah. will take longer. Yeah. The other thing to know is, and I do this all the time now actually, is you can use that, you know the, how there's that frozen collie rice that you can oh. find mm -hmm. like all over the place. I mean every for store has gluten it. gluten free, or no, not gluten free, just well, for healthier. yeah, just um, if you don't want to use rice or right. sometimes they use it in addition to rice. So I throw that in yeah. here. It's, extra it's tasteless. It's just extra vegetables mm -hmm. and my kids don't know yeah. and it's delicious. So, yeah. okay. Great. One last thing is you yes. may want to double bag. <laughs> you want to hold that over? Yeah, sure. So sometimes you don't have to do this, but we've learned the hard way mm -hmm. and it's nice to double bag it sometimes. So we've given you that yeah. option. This is risky right here. That's a risk. I'm living on the edge. And this is the risk averse version. So <laughs> then you're going to freeze it flat mm -hmm. on maybe a rimmed baking sheet, even if it fits in your freezer so it would catch any leaks. But it, you'll freeze it flat and it'll stack. Yeah. Easily. Yay. So that's okay. step one, guys. Good step job. Two. Step, two. step, step two. one and two. Uh, Good yeah. job. All right. We're going to move on to our next meal. All right. We are on step three we are going to chop and prepare all the veggies for our last two meals here so we're going to get started with ginger now ginger is one of my favorite ingredients to use fresh ingredients smells so good. smell that mm. Mm. what's that smell like to you ginger <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of citrusy it's like a spicy citrusy it, there's nothing like it yeah. it's it's awesome it packs the punch now Find your fresh ginger, you've got it. Um, but you might be like, what do I do with this? It's all knobby and weird. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I kind of cut off for us these little weird knobs. I might use them later, but for mm -hmm. right now, I'm gonna use the big chunk. Um, and what you do is you're gonna kind of make it to where you can peel off that skin. Now I've watched Rachel Ray a million times do this and she yeah. uses, oh, I know. Find a flat edge, find a flat edge to brace it. Good point. <laughs> I'm gonna make a flat edge on the bottom. 
Good. That's good. Thank you, Polly. <laughs> Safety patrol. I watched a blogger cooking the other day, and I thought they were going to chop off their finger. They were kind of soup today, and just going after oh, it. I'm like, oh, my God. It's kind of scary. So I'm peeling off the skin here. I'm kind of working my way around. Mm -hmm. um, could you also use a peeler for that? You or could. A trickier? That's a good idea. Vegetable mm -hmm. peeler. So what Rachel Ray uses is actually, she uses a spoon, believe it or not. And she, like, believes in the spoon. I don't know why because i think a knife is easier personally but we trust rachel ray yeah. around here and you guys probably do too so <laughs> okay so i've gotten um the majority of the skin off of here so now i've got this little knob that's peeled right so there's two things you could do we need two tablespoons of this and my eyeball guess is this will be two tablespoons of minced garlic mm -hmm. the other thing you could use is like a little handheld grater like this and so you know you're gonna have to get a little elbow grease in there and start working on that Ooh, that's easy and fun the other thing you can do is kind of chop this guy down so it's flat on one side. And then, boy, you're going to have to get to work in there. Mm -hmm. See how I keep the tip of the knife on the board and I'm rocking back and forth? That keeps, that gives you stability. That's what that blogger was uh, not doing. Not she doing. was having her sweet potato. Oh my gosh, <laughs> keep your fingers out of the way. So this is what I think is super fun is you get better with your knife skills. And I know yeah. some of you watching this are probably like better, way better than we are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, you know, I've learned some things the hard way and I've learned from watching a lot of great mm -hmm. chefs and cooks on TV over the years <laughs> is um, it's really fun to chop things when you I've know what you're doing. I've heard a great tip too is this is a big enough cutting board where it's st it's like heavy and sturdy mm -hmm. but if you have a smaller cutting board putting like a non-stick pad underneath it yeah, or, or towel, even like a like wash a rag towel. yeah just to kind of brace it because I, I a lot of times like to use those plastic flimsy cutting boards because they're easy to kind of like move and move food right. with but they slide they around. Kind of slide around. Right. So if I'm doing a, like a recipe like this or I'm going to chop a lot so I put a rag or something. Try this. It. Okay. So have, I know you know how to do this. Try this, this is really fun. This is how I mince things, okay? So once you got it kind of chopped, <laughs> put your hand on top of the, uh -huh. the knife, keep the tip on the board, and then just go back and forth like this. You can do it with herbs, you can do it with garlic. Look at that, people are gonna be like, oh <laughs> like I'm a pro. Yeah, I'm a pro. I'm a pro, <laughs> look at me, hello. So there you go, let's see, what do you think? That is that about, you wanna measure and yeah. see how much you, you got, got here? here? That looks like about a tablespoon and a half, honestly. Yeah, that's about, I thought that was about one. Okay, half. I'm gonna just go ahead and do this other side. Mm -hmm. I love ginger so much, I don't mind a little extra in there. So. All right, so we're going to do this ginger real quick, and then we're going to move on to garlic. And the ginger and the garlic goes in our honey bourbon chicken mm -hmm. in just a moment. And as you can already tell, that honey bourbon chicken has a lot going on. Ginger, <laughs> garlic, bourbon. It's not boring. It's not boring. Um, people ask us all the time, honey bourbon chicken, can you feed that to your kids? Yeah. Um, yes, you can, because when you're cooking it, most of the alcohol burns off. It cooks off. In the cooking process. Yeah, you don't get boozy from it. <laughs> now, if you want to get boozy from it, that's a whole different <laughs> story, but Just our recipe will garlic. not <laughs> direct you to do that. All right, I got my garlic. Yes. Now, I mean my uh, ginger. Now, on to the garlic. Mm -hmm. um, here's a little trick. So if you're using actual... Good grief, it's going flying. Slippery stuff. Fumble, fumble. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Recovery. Um, a garlic bulb like this, okay? So if you're using that, um, you're going to place it on your cutting board. Now watch this trick. You can either use the flat side of your knife or you could use like a mason jar or something with a flat bottom, okay? Heavy flat bottom. Watch this, I'm gonna give it a whack. I'm gonna give it two whacks and it breaks it apart, okay? So now I've got these separate garlic cloves. Now this calls for 16 garlic cloves. That's a heck of a lot to chop. For the two, right? Wait, for, for the two recipes, okay. right? Yes. So half are going into your balsamic beef. Right. Recipes. All 16 aren't going into the chicken. <laughs> yes. You're not. Right. I mean, I love garlic. We're just saving time by chopping it all at once. Yes. This is the beauty of doing a one-hour prep session. Exactly. That is doing chopping and so, preparing, preparing things. In yeah. Bulk. Efficient. So, but here's what it, my point. Here's what I want to show you is how to do one of these. I've peeled the skin off, and now I'm going to, I'm actually going to chop off this little root end. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just do the same thing I did with my ginger. Very I'm going to cool. kind of slice through right here. I know, keep flying. Why does it make me nervous to watch people chop? Keep your fingers <laughs> out of the way. I've actually, I've never really never cut myself chopped. really well. I don't think I have either. But no. you know what I did do? I, I injured myself pretty badly. Was it last year that mm. I got that black eye? Guys, I stepped on, <laughs> I stepped on a big broom in my... It's like a Three Stooges <laughs> skit. <laughs> <laughs> it totally was. I was like taking my kids to basketball.
basketball practice and um <laughs> that was and a break, wasn't it? it was dark break. in my in my garage and I stepped on the the broom and the handle came up and like whack like hit me super hard like I was cr like crying like involuntarily oh crying it hurt so bad and I had to drive my kids to the basketball and then I had to go to the doctor and get stitches anyway okay here's one of my garlic cloves that's been minced I did my whole mince thing but we're gonna take a shortcut yep because we like because it's 16 cloves of garlic 16 cloves of garlic <laughs> we're gonna use this pre-minced garlic for the rest of it so I usually think one garlic clove is about half a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of yep. what you do? Yep. Okay. Yep. So Everybody says that on the bottle. We're going to use that. <laughs> okay. Yep. Slicing this out of the way. Yes. Last vegetable you're going to work on here mm -hmm. are green onions. Again, these are great, flavorful. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yep. Flavorful ingredient here. Green onions, what I do, you're going to use the white and green part for this. I am going to chop off these little roots mm -hmm. at the bottom and pitch those. And then otherwise, you're just going to kind of carefully slice through. I'm keeping the tip of the knife down. I'm pressing pretty firmly mm -hmm. on the knife down. And we're just going to chop about a cup of those, okay? And are these all for honey bourbon? These are the honey bourbon. Right. Yeah, this is okay. not going the balsamic. Right. So, well, that's a flavor. It smells good. What do you think? Is that about a cup? Let's check it out here. Let's check it out here. Yep. We're good. I was going to mention, this is a, a food mover, also called like a chef's hand. There's lots of different names for this. Yeah. But a lot of times when you cook veggies in mass quantity like this, having one of these is really handy. So you can mm -hmm. kind of do like that, like if you want to take it over to the mm -hmm. stove or something. Yep. Or it's a great cleanup tool too for like if you use a floury type recipe. I use it to scrape off my counter like that. So right. I like to make our cinnamon so rolls smart. or something. So just a food mover. We have a link for that in our um, show notes as well. Okay, so at this point, what you're going to do to help yourself is... Um, all the green onions, all the ginger, and half of the garlic you chopped is going to go off to one side. Mm -hmm. Half of the garlic is going to go to the other side, which we're using our pre-minced garlic, so that's not a problem. But anyway, hang tight. Keep that there. Let's yep. move on to our next step. All right, you're done with step three. We are on step four. We are going to prep our honey bourbon chicken. So as you can see, I already have our handy dandy bag holders up here. Again, you can use that bowl trick if you don't have those. So in each of these bags, I'm going to start by putting four chicken breasts. So it'll serve, what do we say is going to serve? Well, we put four servings? generous servings, but I yeah. really think you could get six out of this easily. easily. Yes, yeah. for sure. Right. So. So she's going to do, she's using a fork so she didn't have to touch it. So you don't have to wash her hands, wash my hands later. in between. So for, we like organic chicken, so mm -hmm. that's what we got. Um, and then after you get that, she's going to get this started for you. Thank do you. a half cup of soy sauce, low sodium soy sauce. Um, if you are trying to be gluten free, you don't want to use regular soy sauce. You want to use gluten free tamari soy sauce or coconut aminos, which we give you those options. I'm actually going to make mine gluten free, um, so Polly's going to dump that in Just hers. Careful, you fill that to the brim. Here there we go. go. Probably no, you're good. Okay. Yes. Um, we're not going to put that in mine. Yep. So reason. normally, if you are not worried about that, or you have the coconut aminos, then you yes. just do both. So. Exactly. Next up is honey. We're going to do a third cup, right? But here's our trick. Spray that with a little cooking spray. Otherwise, you sit here and wait forever. Yeah. While it drips out. <laughs> so it'll slide So out. this is a third cup of honey. And honey is great to buy local or organic as well. So it has a lot of added benefits if you buy local. I think I've even heard that, and don't quote me on this, I've heard that it helps your allergies it if does. you buy local yeah. honey. So. I'm not sure after you cook it if, if that helps. If it destroys that or not. Someone will probably know yeah. that and let us know. Comment let us know. Um, so, hey, there Polly. Go. Yeah. What you been doing here? We just found our <laughs> bourbon bottle. Look at that. Dang, girl. <laughs> now, truthfully, my husband's the bourbon drinker. I wish I liked it because he appreciates it so okay. much. I just don't like it. Here's one fun thing, though. <laughs> Maybe not fun. When I had COVID, uh, lost all sense of taste. And so my husband's like, drink bourbon with me. And so I tasted bourbon. I could taste nothing. I could feel the burn, but I tasted nothing. So that's yeah. the only time I've actually like yeah. really appreciated bourbon. So, so we're putting a fourth cup of bourbon. So it, um, we've had lots of questions about this ingredient. 
First of all, you can find it if you don't want to buy a giant <laughs> bottle of that. Which, oh my gosh, the big boy bottle. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you can find little ones it, like right in the liquor uh, department, like mm -hmm. by the counter. So you could get that. Yep. Um, it is a really nice ingredient. It's like adds a caramel flavor, like a yeah. smoky flavor. But if you don't drink, you don't want any alcohol in it. That's totally fine. Just mm -hmm. add um, more like stuff, like chicken broth would be a great substitute a for more that. Liquid. We need yep. more liquid. Yep. Okay, we need that uh, fourth cup again because now we're going to add. Mm -hmm. So look for like an all natural organic ketchup that doesn't have a bunch of additives. Don't do this to one. it. <laughs> yeah, no, we accidentally bought the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> so ketchup in there, mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to add two tablespoons of either avocado oil or olive oil. So you guys have heard us say this so many times. We really love avocado oil. It's very healthy. And two tablespoons. Delicious. Of that? Yep. Just making sure I got it right. Okay, I'm gonna tablespoons okay. of that. One. Two. I like to pour things over my bags just so I can be a little messy. I like to move fast. So oh, that's smart. Little trick there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our red pepper flakes. Okay. So we're going to pour, pour, <laughs> pour a teaspoon of those <laughs> in each one. Adds a little kick of heat. If you're, yeah. if you've got sensitive palates though, you can pull back on that for sure. Yep. Last thing. Veggies going in? Yep. Okay. So in this little pile here, we've got the green onions, Rachel Top, the ginger, and the garlic. So, mm -hmm. and then we just threw our pre minced garlic in here just so you wouldn't get confused, but mm -hmm. okay, here we go. there you go. There's that food mover. Told you it's handy. Hey. That's Told awesome. you it's handy. So, she's gonna finish putting those in, and then after you've got all your ingredients in your bag, you're gonna do what we did for our last meal. You're gonna seal it, try to squeeze out as much air as possible, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll be able to freeze it. So, if you're gonna make this, is again can be made in the slow cooker so that one up. or the instant pot. Now, we forgot to show you this for the soup, but here's a cool trick, is if you want to make this for in the Instant Pot, mm -hmm. you can cook it from frozen in the Instant Pot. Not so with the slow cooker. Right. You just can't throw icy ingredients in your slow cooker. It's not safe. But in the Instant Pot, you can't. I'm going to grab the pan here. This lever. Okay. So when you freeze a meal for the Instant Pot, you need to freeze it in like a round container, or you can even use the Instant Pot container itself to freeze it in. Um, with chicken in particular, you don't want to stack your chicken, so you want to try to get it really flat in there. Because we found when you stack your chicken and you throw it in there and it's frozen, it just doesn't cook evenly, right. and you'll end up with some pink spots in the yeah. middle. So as best you can, try to make it where, yeah, it cooks not right. on top of each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, we are done with step four, and we're going to move on to step five. All right. Okay, we're on our final step, step five, and we're going to prep our balsamic shredded beef meals. Now, this is pretty easy, but you are going to have to get in and work with the beef a little bit. <laughs> so I want to tell you, first of all, you need to decide, are you going to make this in the slow cooker or the Instant Pot? And here's mm -hmm. why. You're going to, if you're going to make it in the Instant Pot, you need to cut up your roast. And so you can see here, I'm just going to get dirty. <laughs> um, I cut it into like about two inch pieces or so. And so the, the idea is to like make it evenly. Mm -hmm. Um, cut up and that'll help it when you cook it from frozen to get cooked through in a short amount of time. We tested both ways and we, yeah. we really wanted it to work without cutting it up because it'd be so much easier to not have to get your hands dirty. We really wanted it to work and it yeah. just doesn't. So no. this this makes it so much more tender and it's just more even, yep. more predictable cooking time and it's easier to get even like seasoning on all sides yep. here in there. So so what I'm doing now is I'm going to, I'm using my left hand. Are you proud of me? I got my right hand dirty. I usually get my left hand dirty. Um, I'm seasoning it really well with salt and pepper. So don't be afraid to get in there and season it on both sides. Yep. That's with a big chunk of rice. That's a big chunker. <laughs> um, so try to season it, you know, pretty evenly on all your sides here. I was laughing. I gave Rachel like the itty bitty cutting board. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you very much. Like, here's your square to work on. You know, tiny square. We, I like to use one doing me. I like to use plastic cutting boards just because I can throw them in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. You're technically not supposed to put wooden cutting boards in the dishwasher. It can kind of start to warp the wood and just wears it down fast. Yep. So that's why we switched to the plastic cutting board there. Yep. All right. I'm almost done seasoning this really well. And I'm going to stick, um, do you want slow cooker or instant pot? I'll take the in slow cooker. Slow cooker. Okay, yeah. there's Polly's. Okay. I'll do instant pot. And so I'm going to stick this in there. And now Polly's going to start building the marinade while mm -hmm. I wash up. Sorry, my, because it's a big old chunk of meat, it's like sliding out of the holder. So make sure that's <laughs> okay. still there before you start dumping in the wet ingredients. Right, I'm going to go clean up. You're going to start on that. Yes, here we go. Okay, so I have some beef stock here. I'm going to do one cup of those. And each of these, again, measuring over the bag. That way, if you have little spills, no biggie deal. Okay, whoop. 
Okay, hold that, hold. And we've heard from people, sorry, I'm off camera. <laughs> <laughs> What's we, the we've heard from people that beef stock is really, adds a lot more flavor than even beef broth. Have mm -hmm. you heard that too? I haven't, but um, <laughs> I'd leave you. <laughs> or the kind of beef stock that you use matters. <laughs> so That's a good, good way to put it. All right, this is balsamic vinegar, and this is what's going to get that punch of flavor in there. I love balsamic anything. And it reduces down because it cooks so, so long, um, and it, it kind of gets, you know, mm -hmm. sugary. And All right, got a little soy sauce in there. Yep. Um, don't use soy sauce in mine. I'll put, oh, you're right. I'll put coconut aminos yep. in mine for the gluten-free. Okay. Soy, two, two tablespoons of that. Don't forget to do did that. Did you do two tablespoons? No, nope, I did one. <laughs> I this stopped because you told me to stop. This is why it's good to cook with a friend. No. You cook along with us, you learn yes. from our mistakes. We also heard feedback from someone who recently bought one of these sessions, and she said she virtually cooked with a friend. Oh, so fun. I love that. So, so she just fun. did it for Zoom, and they just did it at the same time, which yep. I think is so great. So, okay, next I'm going to add a tablespoon of honey. And so our little trick here, I'm just going to give this a quick spray so that honey slides out real easy. And because otherwise, again, I've made the mistake of doing it the other way, and it's mm -hmm. just like you wait forever. Okay. A sticky bottle here. <laughs> oh no. Our, our honey bottles are. <laughs> We're so immature. I'm so sorry about what? that. We have boys. Like, both of us have boys and they just I'm laugh so... at any of those sounds. So we have to laugh with them. Wait, keep it I, down. I know. I, I exaggerate that sound when they're around just to. I'm just going to eyeball. You do that one right there. Just eyeball. Okay. Do that. <laughs> okay. Then I'm going to do four cloves of garlic, of minced garlic. Again, you can mince it yourself. If you did that with Rachel earlier, or you can cheat and do this. And I have no problems with cheating because it's so much faster and I don't think it takes away from the flavor at all. So yeah. that's about two teaspoons. So I'm just going to pre minced yeah. garlic. And again, that's, I always like air on the side of more garlic. Me because too. I really like it. You can't, okay. you can't screw it up. <laughs> and the last one is you're using red pepper flakes again. Mm -hmm. So we call for a half teaspoon. That's pretty spicy, but. It's, it's a lot of meat, too. It's a lot so, of meat. I'm just eyeballing that just because I don't have a half teaspoon right here. So what is that? Oh, that's one teaspoon. That's one, yep. Great. Like that? Awesome. All right. Guys, okay. that's it. Woohoo! That was step five. So again, you're going to seal it really tight. Yep. Squeeze out your air. People love this one, too, because it's a dump and go meal. Mm -hmm. If you don't chop it up for the Instant Pot, it seriously is just like you put that big roast in there, add all this, and we're done. Look at that. Look what we're doing. We're kind of judging it around, getting all those ingredients mixed together. Judging it? Judging. Mm -hmm. I'm going to freeze mine in a round, circular form, right? Um, I need, I'll do that when I freeze it, because mine's for the Instant Pot. Mm -hmm. Hers is for the slow cooker. Um, this is a great one, too, guys. When you serve it... It'll shred, mm -hmm. and you can serve it over mashed potatoes, polenta. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of eat it by itself. It's awesome yeah. with, like, roasted veggies on the side. You're going to love this one. I want to add one little thing just about prep sessions in general is mm -hmm. that this is a great thing to do. If you have someone in your life who needs meals, for example, I have a cousin who needs some extra meals right now. And so if you make, you can make some for your family and then take the other half to someone mm -hmm. else. So this is just a great way to kind of pay it forward and give yeah. people around you meals that might need them. Absolutely. A little random tidbit. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, you've just made six meals in just one hour. Woo good job, good job. Hey, if you have found this helpful, we're so glad, and we would be so honored if you just shared about our prep sessions with a friend. Um, just tell them how it was helpful to you, and hopefully we'll see you at our next video. Yeah, you can find all of our prep sessions at onehourfreezerprep.com, so check the rest of those out, and we hope to see you in our next video. Bye. Bye, guys.